Hi everyone, this is Allison Livingstone from Simplifying Soul. Today's video, I wanna share with you five unique kind of creative touches that you may not have on your contract to close checklist already that can add some extra touches to your clients and make you look better. So getting started, you probably, even if you don't have a transaction coordinator or if you do, you probably have some type of contract to close checklist that you follow. So what we're gonna do is think of some action items that aren't very difficult, they're all free, that you can do to level up your business, provide better customer service, and get more exposure. Here we go. So number one is going to be asking your seller to share their listing on their own social media. So I hope it is on your checklist already to share the listing on your social media, such as your Facebook page, and what we're gonna do then is ask the seller if they can share our post. So the main benefits to this is obviously then you're making sure that seller is following, liking your Facebook page. In addition to that, if they can share it directly from your post, it's gonna be branded to your Facebook page, which is just gonna give you more visibility to their friends and neighbors, which is really who we're wanting to network to, right? Those people in our farm, in the neighborhood we like to work in, who already know our seller is working with us. It's the warmest, best kind of referral or lead we can get. So that's a big bonus. If you don't have a Facebook page or some other way the client can share your post, you can always send them a link for them to share on their social media of their choice. And I know some programs like Listings to Leads offer email templates you can automatically send your seller to share their listing. That also helps as well because when they do click on the MLS link, they're going to see your branded information, the Zillow link, whatever it is, your name's going to pop up. And it's also going to show that they're selling their house. Someone else who's thinking of it may start the conversation with them. And so this is a really free, easy way to get warm leads. And it can also help your seller feel more involved. I think we've all probably had a seller who's like, what are you doing for me? Or how can I help? And so this shows that you are posting on social media. You are trying to get their listing out there and it can make them feel involved. Okay, so number two, we're going to do claiming our sales in Zillow. So even if you are not a Zillow Premier agent, you should be able to make a profile on Zillow where you can get reviews and post some information about yourself um, for potential clients that may find you that way. And so I think we all know that five-star reviews are great at making us look credible. But if you don't have very many of those or you just wanna add on to your credibility, a great thing that I don't see a lot of agents take advantage of is the ability to claim your past sales in Zillow. So you can do this for clients you helped buy a home or you helped sell their home or both. Um, I'll link to my blog where I have the specific instructions on how to do this. I add it to my checklist to do it after each closing. And so that's what I would recommend, but if you have a big history, you can upload an Excel file and get them all done at once. So that's just another way to up your exposure. It takes about less than five minutes after the closing, done. Okay, and then so number three, we're going to set a calendar task to call our client that just closed one month after closing. And we're going to do this immediately after the closing. If you wanna do it on the closing day, after you walk out of closing and you're sitting in your car, when you get back home to your office, whatever you wanna do, it's super easy to lose touch with your clients and you know asking them for a review or referral on closing day or shortly after when they're moving they're very stressed they've got a lot going on i find that if you agents touch base with them about a month later they're usually pretty settled in they're happier they've got some more time to chat they may have had friends over for a housewarming who may have mentioned they were needing to move or looking for an agent or inquiring with information about their new area, their new home, stuff like that. So that's a really good time to check in with your client. And it's super easy, 15, 20 minute phone call, whatever you and they have time for, I think about a month after closing is a great way to touch base. So we just wanna make sure we put that in our contract to close checklist the day of closing or after that we are setting that calendar task in our CRM or in our Google Calendar, wherever we're using, so we don't forget and it's a super easy touch point to follow up with a past client. Okay, and number four is a pretty unique one. So something we're gonna do here is if we have a listing, you can get a big manila white envelope and pre-address it to your seller's foraging address, which 
I hope it's also on your contract to close checklist to collect the seller's forwarding address and write it down so you can send them marketing materials in the future or if you needed to reach them. So since we already have that, we are going to pre-address an envelope to their new address and stamp it, whatever you need to do. I usually find the big envelopes take about three stamps. Um, and then a couple days after closing, a week after, whatever you would like, drop by the home and introduce yourself to the new buyer um, and give them that envelope and just say, hey, would you mind watching the mail for the next month or so? You know, in case anything the seller didn't get forwarded in time comes in, I already pre-addressed and stamped this envelope. So if you could just throw anything in there and then in about a month or so, if you could just drop it in the mailbox, we would really appreciate it. So not only does this help your sellers, obviously if they have any lost mail, if they maybe left a key or something that they need small, that will fit in the envelope, it's perfect and makes it really easy for the new buyer to give it to them without much hassle. It kind of could save you a trip or two if you need to. And what else it does is obviously gives you a new contact in the neighborhood. Um, so you can drop your business card off, you can just chat with the new buyer. Um, if it's your neighborhood or neighborhood you farm, it's always great to know everyone. Uh, we're not trying to steal anyone's client, we're just trying to meet people in the neighborhood and you never know their agent may retire, go out of business, or move to a different area the next time they need to sell, so it never hurts to make an extra contact. Okay, and last but not least is number five. And this is gonna be something that I guarantee is already on most of your checklist, but I'm gonna ask you to move it way up in the process. So this is coordinating the exchange of keys. If it's not on your checklist, you should add it now. I think I have seen this slip through the cracks way too many times because it just always comes at the end. And sometimes you don't wanna think about it too soon when the option period's not over, we don't have closing schedule, why should we do this? Because we don't want to lose weeks, possibly months of great customer service to our clients because they're scrambling and they don't know where to get their keys on closing day. This can cause a lot of stress to the client. I think sometimes it's overlooked and especially setting the client expectations with buyers up front that they are not gonna get those keys just because they're at the title company they are going to have to wait for closing and funding. So this is something I've seen disappointment in buyers plenty of times. They think even if they sign at 8 a.m. that day and the seller hasn't signed yet, they're gonna walk out with their keys and they can schedule movers for later that day. So with things like that, movers, utilities, them taking off work, we really wanna set clear expectations about when they're actually gonna be able to access the home and when it's really theirs, which is after closing and funding. I know some agents try to get buyers to schedule after the sellers, so it's more likely um, that when they sign, they're closer to getting the keys. And so it's really important to communicate with, if you're representing the buyer, to communicate with the other agent up front. Usually say, you know, a week or so after the option period, maybe around the finance contingency date when things are looking good for closing, we're talking small details, everybody's in good spirits. Let's figure out what the seller's plan is for the keys. That way we can tell the buyer exactly where they can get them, how many to expect, and when they can expect them. And if you're representing the seller, as a listing agent, I highly recommend that first meeting, talk to the seller about their inventory. How many keys do they have? How many garage openers do they have? And keep a note of that in your file. And you can go ahead and set the expectation with them of where they can plan to leave those items on closing day. And then you'll want to just remind the seller and let the buyer's agent know when we get close to closing. So those are my five tips on things you can add or improve on your contract to close checklist that you might not have thought of. I hope you find this helpful. And if you have any questions, I elaborate a little more on the task in my blog, which I will link. And I would love to comment and hear what unique things you have on your checklist that you think put yourself above and beyond ready for closing. Thanks everyone, have a great day.